What's up guys, David Hitter 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're talking about the top 10 worst cards of 2021. 2021 was a great year for Yu-Gi-Oh, in that it wasn't. <laughs> Not only did we get some particularly interestingly bad cards, uh, we didn't have like any events to play them in. Starting to sound like a broken record on that one. Hopefully we'll actually get to play some Yugi Mans this year. That'd be nice. But that doesn't mean I can't do my favorite pastime, dumping on bad cards. So without further ado, let's look at some jank. Number 10 is Glacial Aqua Madure. What the hell is a Madure? Level six water spellcaster, 1200 attack, 3k defense. That's a big, big booty. That's a thick ass mod! But you know what? It's the year 2022 and uh, we, we, we really are way far flung from tribute set. Hope they run into it. So, uh, this thing better do something. At the start of the damage step, if your normal monster, oh, here we go already. Battles an opponent's monster, you can reveal this card, discard a card. I don't know why it's not just discard this card, but sure. And if you do, uh, your monster can't be killed by battle. Big, big whoop. If you're playing a normal monster, it's probably a big number, because otherwise, what the hell are you doing? So I don't know why you need this. But it also has a field effect. Because of course it does. At the start of the damage step, if this is the thing that's fighting, you can reveal a normal monster in your hand, discard one card, and if you do, destroy the monster you're fighting. Why isn't it just that effect? Why aren't they both just that? Depending on who's in the hand and who's on the fit, whatever. Okay, so what what the hell are you supposed to use this in? Uh, is it that that deck with the with the, the field spell that's like Umi and it summons a big token? What the hell is that freaking called? The one with it's like it's like spiral, but but not when not the spiral you think of when somebody says spiral in Yu-Gi-Oh. Or like Tenyi maybe? I don't freaking know. Who's playing normal monsters? This would be fun in Duel Links though. I think this would be cool in Duel Links. And you know what? I might play a deck with this card in it. Cause I play bad deck. <laughs> but Dave! My heart! My roaring ocean snake! <laughs> Number nine! Steel Star Regulator. That sounds like a cowboy or something. It not though. It's a big weird extra dimensional gomer guy. Uh, who the hell knows what this thing's supposed to be. Link three light machine. Sure, why not? Why isn't it a cybers? 1000 attack. Okay, first of all, it's made of three non-link monsters. You can't use a link two to make it. You get no discount. You gotta raw dog this thing. Feels bad, man. Phrasing. Shut up. Gains attack equal to the combined levels or ranks of the crap you made it with. Times. 100. Wow, that's not a lot. Okay, so, I don't know, you're playing trains, and instead of making one of your giant, unkillable boss monsters, you make this big beater instead, because making this with level 10s is the only way to give this thing any kind of decent boost. Conversely, you made this with three level 4s, like, you know, a normal deck would do. It's got like 2200 attack, that's not good. <laughs> For a beat stick? Nah. It does have another effect though, that you can target a non-link monster your opponent controls, and if this thing has an attack that's equal to or higher than that, you can blow it up. And if you made this thing with an XC monster as one of its materials, you know, sinking more resources into it, your opponent takes some burn damage equal to half the destroyed monster's attack. Who cares? <laughs> Jeez. You only use this guy's effect once per turn. It's a hard once per turn. You can't even just clear their board with it. Cause that would be okay. <laughs> An ignition pop isn't the worst thing in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a bit old school, but it's still, it's still okay. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. And it's gonna be big number, so if you pop an opponent's monster and you can hit him with it, uh, it at least you know they, you might you might have lethal if you made it big enough. But it has no self protection. You used way too much to make it, and if you want to get its full effect, you used even more. But it's big number though. Maybe, maybe. Number eight, Pazuzel. It's Pazuzu. <laughs> Time to duel, yeah! I am so old. Level one Dark Fiend monster, scale one. 500 attack and defense. All right, so this one's a weird one. It's pendulum effect says you can target the monster in your other pendulum zone. This thing's scale becomes that monster's level. But if you do that, the only special summons you can conduct for the rest of your turn are pendulum summons. Okay. That is bad. This is a scale one. So unless you can somehow cheese this thing and make it a scale zero, if you are modulating its scale, you can only increase it, thus narrowing the range of the things you can pendulum summon. Unless the monster in the other zone is also a low scale, but a high leveled monster. Therefore you can use this to switch this thing to a high scale. Or 
You could just build your pendulum deck with proper ratios of high and low scales and not ever run into a scenario where you need to use this janky thing. It does have an okay monster effect though. Pendulum summons of your monsters cannot be negated. That's cute, I guess. What would make this card good is if that said pendulum summons that include this monster cannot be negated. Because then, if you pendulum summon this and then like a bunch of other crap, your opponent can't hit you with the strike. What year is it? Why am I so old? But nah, you gotta normal summon this thing first to bestow the protection upon your precious pendulum summon. <laughs> oh, imagine wasting your normal on this and not like, I don't know, a search card. Oh, it's not good. Number seven, Dispatch Parazzi. Dispatch Parazzi. That's not a pun, Jerome. Link two, Dark Fiend. These are all just Dark Fiend monsters, aren't they? 100 attack. <laughs> it's a world ender. Made of two effect monsters. What do? When another monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can switch that attack to this thing and then perform damage calculation. This thing has a hundred attack. That's just, this is just what your opponent's gonna swing into first anyway. But sure, let's say your opponent's an idiot and they attack anything else. Does it matter? Well, it has a second effect that says, when this card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster, you can destroy that monster. And if you do, you gain life points equal to half that monster's original attack. Okay, so one of two scenarios are happening. Either A, they attack one of your good monsters and you redirect, have this thing blow up and kill their monster that they attacked with. The intent of the card. Or B, the more likely scenario, your opponent's gonna pick their stupidest guy, crash into this thing first, so it auto kills the stupid one and then proceed to obliterate your board. If your opponent takes three seconds to read it, its effect will never activate. <laughs> because why would your opponent attack anything else? with anything else. They're going to attack this first with their shittiest dude. And you know what's even the worst part about this card? It's Link 2 that has like arrows like this. And we have like three other Link 2 monsters with like identical arrows in the game that bestow better battle protection. I'm so mad about this card. Why am I so mad? <laughs> Number six, reinforcements of the army's troops. Oh God, that's a... That's an awful mouthful. That's what she said! The cool thing about this card, besides its absolute bear of a name, is the fact that it is just the card it's referencing, Reinforcements of the Army, uh, from like a different perspective, which is kind of neat. Where Reinforcements of the Army makes like Marauding Captain and his boys look cool, this one makes them all look like a bunch of goobers. <laughs> I guess it's just, it's just framing, right? Can confirm, does make video. What do? This continuous spell card, ew, when an attack is declared involving one of your warrior monsters, you can special summon one warrior level four or lower monster from your hand. You can only use this thing's effect once per turn. Uh, yeah, cause, cause why would they actually want to make it good? Cause if it was not once per turn, you could like boop, summon, boop, summon, boop, or something like that. You know, that'd be, that'd be okay. It wouldn't be, still, it wouldn't be great. Cause it only worked on an open board with a bunch of level fours could even do anything with, but at least it'd be kind of fun. But nah, it's bad. All right, so uh, what are you trying to do? You're trying to summon a guy during your battle phase to presumably use during your main phase two to make your combo plays? That's clunky. Or I guess it's during your opponent's battle phase and you really, you really like causing replays. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. You know what? If it was a once per turn, that'd be a pretty neat way to swarm the board during your opponent's battle phase. And I don't know if that'd be good still, but it would at least be interesting. But nah, it's just bad. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. What it's summoning is probably some boneheaded main deck level four warrior that doesn't do anything other than become material for something in an extra deck play. So it's not gonna live, man. What are you doing? Crashing, dying, and replacing it immediately? And you still only got one guy? This is stupid. Number five. Laundry trap. Ah, look, another continuous card. This time it's a trap card. Once per chain. Ooh, spicy. If a monster is normal or special summon, you can dump one card from the top of your deck to your graveyard. Oh, neat. You can take the maxi challenge against yourself. <laughs> Middle of your wombo combo. Activate this, and then you try to summon as much as you can before you deck yourself out. It's like that race with the Nyquil, if you got that 
uh, you're a degenerate. Besides being a really, really clunky and slow trap card method of setting up your graveyard, uh, it does actually have another function. That if this thing is sent from the deck to the graveyard, presumably by the effect of another copy of itself on the board, you can target a card in your graveyard that was also sent to the graveyard from the deck this turn, so not itself, and you can add that to your hand, but you can't activate it till the end of the turn, or use any cards like it or, or anything. It's just a dead card until next turn. It's any card, so that's at least cute. The best function would be a mill like your Imperial Order and you add it back to your hand. It's a great way for uh, getting unsearchable tech cards to your hand. However, it is through a random mill, so maybe it mills and adds the card that you were going to summon anyway. Not to mention the best way to use this is when you're already going off anyway. So what are you trying to set up? I am, I am unsure. Konami, stop making setup cards trap cards. All right, here we go. Number four is Fukubiki. Yo, it's your boy, Fukubiki. Fukubiki, 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 Fukubiki can't be the proper pronunciation of this. Fubukibi? No. I watch enough anime, come on, Dave. You smell that? It smells like, like a f***ing weeb. Bad card or not, it's at least nice to see Scrap Kong Shirt Kid get some more lore, you know? That's at least kind of fun. This kid really has a lot of first world problems. <laughs> what does this normal trap card do? Each player shuffles their deck and then excavates the top card of their deck. Then whoever has the monster with the highest attack power gets to keep that. The other one goes to the graveyard. If what you revealed was a spell trap or a monster with a question mark, it counts as a zero. If you tie, they both go to the bottom of the deck. Okay, so it's another setup trap card. Stop it. You're just wasting cardboard with that. At least it's kind of fun. This is one of those cards the anime protagonists would use to like reveal their big stupid boss monster and add it to their hand against their opponent's like little tiny dude. Oh no, you're going to add the card to your hand you were going to potentially draw next turn anyway. Oh no. At least, I don't know. It's kind of fun at least. Number three, arrow picks three. Oh, oh, did you guys do that on purpose? Oh, discord you incorrigible scamps. Level one, fairy wind. Oh, why aren't you a light? It's a tutor though. That's good. All right, so this one's actually kind of fun. What do? Once per turn, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls. It's in the same column as this card. Move this card to another one of your main monster zones and move that opponent's monster to the same column as the one you move this thing to. Then you put a burn up counter on it, I sure. And monsters with a burn up counter lose 200 attack for each one. So I guess if you scooted around your opponent's dude a bunch of times, they'll have like no attack power. Jankiest Venom monster ever. It's incredibly disrespectful. Okay, so this is really bad. Column based mechanics, other than like some link stuff, isn't particularly very good in Yu-Gi-Oh Man's. Um, however, this is at least kind of fun. Dream scenario. It's on the board and your opponent's in the middle of their wombo combo and you scoot one of their guys over and now like their their arrows don't line up the way they need them to and it bungles their whole thing. Um, you could just play, I don't know, Ash Blossom or Nibiru or something that would legitimately stop their play regardless of what scenario it is, but the dream, when this thing goes off and actually bungles a play, it would be pretty legendary. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> that will never happen though. And most Wombo Combo decks worth their salt could probably play around it. So it's a terrible card requiring a very specific scenario and a lot of high technical play in order to use properly. It will never go off. <laughs> but if it did... But Dave, the burn up counter! I don't actually know why it even does that. I like the artwork though. It's got an 80s workout vibe. It's cute. Number two. Oh boy, Alberto. Jar of generosity. Holy crap. You know what I'm realizing just now? Half these cards are from like Dawn of Majesty. So for every Sue ship and magic key we got, we got a jar of generosity. What? Hashtag most mixed bag <laughs> of 20. 21. Okay, so what does this do? Well, continuing the great tradition of jars are just trap versions of the pots, we have Jar of Generosity, which places one card from your hand to the top or bottom of your deck. Oh, wow. On a trap card. Not only can I nag myself two cards, I can do it a turn late just because. That's terrible. Obviously, for all those screaming in the comments about this thing, the one function is to put like Mahad back on the top of your deck so you can draw it properly in order to use its ability. But like, 
Why? Like Spreader Zombie, which are a monster that summons itself from the grave and is a tuner. You know, something good. But no, you can use this crappy trap card in order to do that. And I guess, technically speaking, you're not going to be able to get to the card you need to draw during your draw phase till the next turn anyway, so activating this thing during your opponent's end phase, I guess, isn't much different than if this was just a spell card anyway, I suppose. But you're still playing a trap card to unbrick a very specific hand which you could just remedy by playing an extra copy of the card you don't want to open. <laughs> <laughs> or just run the gamble with it at one. You know what? The, the odds are that you're not going to do it every duel. So, um, wow, this card stinks. All right, honorable mention. The first honorable mention we got is your playmat. <laughs> the, the one you are currently using. I've said that joke before. <laughs> your playmat's a really fun website. With my promo code right here, you can get yourself some custom card sleeves. Nothing quite like telegraphing to your opponent exactly the deck you are playing before you even sit down. <laughs> no, I'm not playing frogs. How could you tell? Has whole deck with Toad on it. It would be a pretty nifty smoke screen, though. It worked game one. You know, one of these days I'm going to remember to stick the, the sponsor into an, a section that is not honorable mention. But it is not this day. But no, the real honorable mention is, oh boy, Armed Dragon Thunderbolt. Some normal trap card with a wall of text. I can tell when uh, the list has been spearheaded by Kieran, he puts axes to grind in them. For instance, this trap card. <laughs> you. <laughs> this normal trap card gives one of your armed dragon monsters a huge attack boost, 1,000 for, for every armed dragon monster in your graveyard, with an equal or lower level than the one on the field, but with different names. So if you had level climbed with your level monster, you can then make Arm Dragon level 10 have a, a bunch of attack power. And I think the new boss monster also does something with big numbers. So I guess it, it, it bolsters him, but it, it offers no protection. It's just a cheesy damage step card on a trap card. It, it does have some recursion, but it's recursion for a spell. And I don't know if the deck really cares about that. It would rather be, be a monster, presumably. I don't know. Number one! We did it, boys! We got to number one. What the hell could it be? Margin trading! A normal spell card. <laughs> Insider trading! Once per turn, target one face-up Martha Stewart on your opponent's side of the field, and if you do, banish that until the end of your opponent's next turn. <laughs> I am so old! Margin trading is a normal spell card that reads, Your opponent can discard one card to negate this effect. Stop! That is so so bad. It doesn't matter what the rest of the card says. If a card gives your opponent an option to negate it for free without actually having a card that does a negate and waste one of their negates, it's bad. Because one of two things are happening. Either A, the card's really good, so your opponent's just going to always negate it. It's just always negate it. You're never going to get it off. Or, or two, the card isn't very good, and your opponent's just going to let it ride, so you don't even get the, the, the advantage of knocking a card out of their hand, and then you're also playing a bad card, which you could just not do. It's pretty easy, actually. There's 10,000 cards in the game, you only need 40 of them. It's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? But yeah, what does it do? Both players look at the other player's deck, pick a card out of it, and give it to their opponent. That's at least kind of fun. All right, best case scenario, your opponent is forced to give you a great card because your deck building is absolutely flawless and your opponent is a moron and he has bad cards in their deck or like a garnet, like a literal garnet or something, and you give that to your opponent. So they get a bricky card and they Sophie's choice to something decent to your hand. Best case scenario. Worst case scenario, both players are competent strategies and don't run a bunch of cards that, you know, they don't want in their hand. So then you both just get a good card and, and, and uh, you went minus one for it when you could have not have uh, given your opponent something for free. That's real bad. It's at least fun though, it's at least fun. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Some of these cards were uh, real bad. Number two, oh boy. At least it didn't give your opponent a resource like with uh, number one, but still, holy crap. But I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Leave your comments down below if you think I missed something. There was a lot of bad cards. They were all in Dawn of Majesty. <laughs> and remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta wheel, I'll see you guys, uh, I'll see you guys f for the first video of the new year that's not a video talking about the last year probably a probably next main set i don't know
just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. What's up guys, Team Leader 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day, and today we're talking about the top 10 worst cards of 2022 or what? Damn it! Why don't I know what year it is? Raw dog feels bad. <laughs> I get that fuzzy out of my hair. Jesus. Penis, 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 penis. Gains attack, you. <laughs> Shit, I'm still laughing at that. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.